One of the things I love about feeder fishing is there are certain little things that you can do when you're fishing and the anglers around you don't know you've done it. I love things like that, you know. We all like to think that we've got little things up our sleeve that are going to give us an edge. And let's face it, how many times do you change something and you suddenly start catching fish and you can't conceal it? You know, because you're kind of giving it away. It's hard enough to win anything these days on the, on the circuit. So if you can keep anything up your sleeve and do things that the other anglers don't know about, then uh, they're the th kind of things I really, really like. And one of them is the consistency of your ground bait. Now, this is something that I honestly think, if I'm absolutely honest, that I found this out by accident. I remember when I first got back into fishing, I didn't, 10 years ago, whatever it was, I didn't have a very good side tray set up. It wasn't covered from the rain. And what basically what happened once, I was fishing a match and it started raining and I wasn't really paying much attention to my bait. And my ground bait got a little bit wet. I don't know what it was, something ran off into it and it was a little bit wet. And I suddenly had this, this wet ground bait and I didn't realize at the time, I suddenly started fishing and I thought it was a massive coincidence that straight after this, this, um, this storm that had gone through, I suddenly started catching one or two skimmers and I hadn't caught any prior to that. And obviously it wasn't until a couple of years later that I realized that it was, it was the consistency of the ground weight that had changed. And that, obviously I can't prove it, but it was an amazing coincidence that I suddenly started catching after that happened. A couple of years down the line, um, we kind of filed, I was fishing a, a silverfish festival at uh, Lawford Lakes, similar to this, about 12 feet deep. And I suddenly changed my mix and it just completely transformed my session. It was unreal, you know, and that, that pattern was re repeated all the way through that winter. And that's where I kind of, it drilled home to me about how important the consistency of your ground bait can be. Now, obviously, whatever kind of mix you're using, you've made a decision on whatever colour you're going to use. This one's F1 Natural, you know, that's a different video for a different day. But when I start a session, I always start off with my ground bait in a particular consistency, and that is a starting consistency, all right? Now, usually it's a little bit damp depending on what sort of fishing we're doing. And what we generally find is that if you're after small fish, roach, anything, then you might start off your session with a, a drier mix. Because a drier mix is generally, obviously it depends on the mix that you're using, but it's generally a little bit more active. There might be bits fizzing off it. And initially when I'm starting a session, particularly if I'm after anything, that's what I want because I want to advertise to the fish that there's some food here. You know, if there's any in front of him or him, I want them to come to me. And that's how I like to start a session. Because once you get the fish there, that is when you, you've then got to manage it. You know, if you are getting bites, you've got to turn them bites into fish, all right? But until the fish are there, they, you know, there's no point in focusing on that bit, is there? So I like to start off with it quite dry, just to get some fish there. And that is how I'll start the session, all right? Now, depending on the mix that you're using, this one, it's a great versatile mix. I can fish with this mix in different consistencies. And when we talk about consistencies, what we're talking about is basically how much water you put in there, all right? So I always start off with a dry mix because obviously then I can then add water to it as the session progresses and I can change that consistency to whatever I want it to be, you know? Now we are predominantly talking about feeder fishing, all right? If you are float fishing, exactly the same thing applies, but the biggest difference is if you are float fishing or fishing with a whip or a pole, the biggest difference is you can do that when you're float fishing. If you're predominantly feeder fishing or if you're fishing at range, you can't throw your ground bait in. Most fisheries don't even allow you to throw ground bait in. So we don't have that option. So that can limit, obviously, how sloppy or how over wet you have your mix, all right? So that's something we'll talk about in a moment. But what I'll basically do is I will start off with a, um, a fairly dry mix. And then as the session progresses, depending on how it's going, I won't be afraid to add water to it and it is as rough and ready as that that's all i do i always have a tub of water with me on my side tray and i can just quickly and easily over wet this mix or make it a little bit damper now as you start to dampen it you're adding more water to it so you, you're generally making it a little bit more inert all right so if you are after better fish skimmers a bream you know if you are getting plagued with with, with small fish there may be too act much activity so by adding more water to it you're actually deadening the mix down a little bit when you first do it, you know, because the water in there is going to make the, the mix, it's got more water in there, it's going to be much more inert and not as active. And that in itself can be enough to transform your swim. So if there's lots of small fish there, that would be the first thing that I would do. Add a little bit more water and just deaden your mix down a little bit. All right. Now you might find that works. I've seen it happen on so many different venues, even natural venues. Even in Ireland, I've gone from catching a roach every cast to suddenly catching skimmers or bream. 
literally within a few minutes. Same line, same mix, same bass, everything. All right, and it's so easy to do, but it, it's amazing how many people overlook it. So by deadening your mix down, you're just getting rid of all that activity. You're encouraging it to stay in the feeder till it hits the, it's the bottom. And you're gonna to start to get what we call a wet cloud. So when you've got your dry mix, you get a, a cloud that's a drier cloud. Or you can almost see the particles in there and you'll see that falling through the water. Once you get a wet mix, obviously depending on, the, on how wet you have your ground bait, with a mix like this, it's just so versatile, you get a wet cloud. Completely different. All right, and that in itself can be enough to transform and just draw fish into your swim. Now you've got a couple of limitations with this, all right, and it's something that you really need to bear in mind. The first limitation, obviously, is if you have it too wet, it's, going to be not, it's not going to stay in the feeder. It's going to empty on the grass behind you, or you know, before you even cast. So that's something you need to think about. But this is not black and white, you know. You can tailor make this mix so that it literally just stays in your feeder. If you're casting at short range you can get away with it wetter because you're not having to punch the feeder as hard. If you were having to cast 40, 50 metres, you'd probably have to have it a little bit stiffer because you're punching the feeder harder, so there's more chance of it coming out on the cast. So you've got that limitation, but obviously one of the things that's going to help you do that is the style of feeder that you use. All right, so for example, if you've got a cage feeder like this with a really wet mix, that is all right. If I was just casting short to maybe medium range, that would be okay. But what you might find is that if it's really wet, then you might have to switch to a more enclosed feeder like that one because it's got more surface area of the feeder actually holding on to the ground bait itself, if that makes sense. This is a fine wire cage. If we had a plastic cage feeder, we've got one here. It is a distance feeder, but it's a plastic cage. So as the name suggests, it's still a cage but it's plastic. You see the actual stems of the plastic, there's much more surface area there, so it's gonna hold on to that wet mix better. All right, so just have a look at the style of your feeder, because if you do want a really wet mix, changing the style of feeder can help you achieve, um, achieve the, the ground bait that you want, that it's gonna be as wet as you want it, but it's gonna actually gonna stay in the feeder, if that makes sense. So that's the first limitation that you've got. Now, the other limitation that you've got is think very, very carefully about Yes, you might be able to get one or two extra fish with a wet mix. The wet mix might be the way to go. However, if you were fishing somewhere like we're faced with today, this swim is potentially 12 feet deep. If you've got a really, really wet mix, which might look ideal, you might have got super confidence in it. If that's exploding on impact, then what you're gonna have is you're gonna have all the cloud up there, which could potentially be 12 feet above your feeder. And if there is any tow on the lake, you know, it might be going left to right, right to left. That cloud is going to be moving out of your swim and it's not going to be going down to the bottom where your feeder is. So that's something that you really need to think about. On shallower venues, some of the commercials we fish, it might be three, four feet deep, five feet even, you can get away with a really wet mix. However, on deeper venues, just think very, very carefully about the consistency of it, you know. And one of the ways that you can find out how effective you, the, the ground bait is actually staying in the feeder, it's a very, very simple test. It's something that a lot of people don't really um, think they can do. It's quite simple. Just fill your feeder to the consistency that you think you want it. All right, cast it out. Obviously, if it stays in the feeder, that's the first test. If it stays in, that's great. When it hits the surface out there, if it's emptying on impact, you're going to see that because you'll see, particularly with a, a natural coloured mix like this, you're going to see the cloud on the surface. All right, but if that doesn't happen, if you still want to know if your feeder is still full when it hits the bottom, as soon as it hits the bottom, just move your feeder very very gently you're going to know you'll feel it if there's still ground bait in there you will feel it you'll know if the feeder's empty or not just that one cast yes you're sacrificing a cast but that one cast will let you know if your feeder is still loaded or still full when it hits the bottom if it's not you'll know because the feeder will move really easily so you might want to just put a little bit more dry with it when you're doing this don't do the whole mix we generally do it in one side or one little corner if you've got a square bait box just one little corner because then obviously you can add a little bit more dry to it or a little bit more water to it and then you're not ruining your whole mix this is a it, it when i first found this out and i realized how effective it was i was over the moon with it because the anglers at the next peg they don't know you're doing this so if you do suddenly get a run of fish by changing it they don't know you've done anything different and it's nice to keep the odd little thing up your sleeve isn't it particularly if you're catching and they're not
it's something that's really, really fun to play around with, you know, and, you know, I strongly recommend trying it because that's the only way you're going to get confidence with it. And for me, it's one of the most overlooked key aspects of our feeder fishing.